Yeah. So this is the second part of lecture on chapter six. Uh, we were discussing in the middle of this slide, we were discussing this. Is anticipated or an unanticipated government policy more effective? See, sometimes the businesses, the private sector, will anticipate the policy the government is going to announce. Sometimes it is unanticipated, right? So the private sector, the rest of the economy is not ready. They do not anticipate. There is a sudden change in policy by the government. So the effect of these two type of changes, right? Expected anticipated changes or unexpected unanticipated changes of the government policies may also have different results. So we have to be, when we are talking about the performance of these economic policies, we have to be careful about this anticipated and unanticipated government policies also, and the different effect they may have on the economy. So this is about the US. For the US output growth on an average was 2.7% per year between 1995 and 2007. So see the Great Recession started from 2000, from uh, middle of 2007. So before that time, there was the annual average growth rate of US GDP was quite, quite good, see? Quite good. And then, uh, so 2.7%. Given the size of the US economy, this growth, this growth rate is very, this growth rate is very, uh, very, uh, uh, very remarkable, right? And then um, uh, we can compare that with the Japanese economy, which grew at an average rate of only 1% per year over the same time period, see? So, uh, so the Japanese economy grew only 1% per year during this time period. And in 2008-2009, however, the U.S. economy lost eight, lost eight uh, million jobs, and the unemployment rate rose from 4.6 percent uh, to as high as high as 10 percent. See, so this unemployment rate at the height of the great uh, in uh, before the 2007, this unemployment rate in the U.S. was only 4.6 percent. But in 2011, just after just after the Great Recession, the Great Recession, the unemployment rate went 9.1 percent. And if, and if you now compare this with Greece, at that time Greece had 17.9 percent unemployment rate. South Korea had 3.5 percent, right? And 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 France had or 9.3 percent unemployment rate. About the inflation rate, inflation rate was not a problem during this time, so it was just 3% in 2011. And in Norway, it was 1.3. In Kenya, in Kenya, it was 14%. And in Argentina, it was 21%. Uh, percent. See, so we can easily compare and see that the that the U.S. economy did not do uh, did well in case of inflation, but it had problem with what? Problem with unemployment during this time and since then today today if you look at the current data recently published data you will see that unemployment rate is about five percent and inflation rate is about three percent in the u.s right and um, okay and uh, output grow, grow, uh, growth will be like this two point uh, two point uh, uh, about two percent right and um, you can go to the BEA website, BEA, Bureau of Accounting, BEA website, uh, uh, website, and, and look at the recent data, uh, quarterly or annual data for the US. Now, let us give you an example of economic growth, right? Uh, standard of living showed virtually no growth over hundreds or even thousands of years. Until uh, the until the industrial revolution in uh, in um, in England, right, um, in the in the middle of 17th uh, century. So what happened is that uh, technology remained relatively low. There was no industrial revolution, and as a result of this low technology, as output increased, so did population. As a result, population growth rate did not change. A uh, population uh, as a result, output per uh, uh, capita did not change, right? 
So let us define now, let us first of all define the standard of living, this word for you. Standard of living, standard of living is represented by output per uh, output per uh, capita, right? So this is total output or, or as we call GDP, gross domestic product of a country divided by total total output GDP divided by total population. That is output per capita, right? And for a long time in the human history for thousands of years, total population increased, but uh, and our total output also increased. But the two rates, uh, two increase was uh, close to uh, close, very close. And as a result, what happened? Uh, and the technology, technology remained low, and there was no industrial revolution. And as a result, what happened? As a result, standard of living, or as we measure a standard of living by this output per capita remained fixed for a long time. So standard of living for a peasant in Rome was the same in 500 BC, BC as it was in, uh, in 1000 years later in 1500 BC. See, because of what? Output and population increased at a similar rate. So, so the, uh, the quotient, the output per capita, the standard of living did not change much, right? Technology remains primitive. The technology improved, but improved at a very slow rate. Similar for Chinese, Chinese uh, between AD 1800 as it was in the year AD 1100, see? So no major change. As the Roman production, as the Roman and Chinese production increased, right? So did their population. So output per person remained the same. Now uh, standard of living, depend on output per person, right? Our well-being, our standard of living depend on how much goods and services we get to consume. And that, that is, uh, that is, uh, that is, we, 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 should, we learn about that, how much goods and services we get to consume from this output per capita. This remains same. If this remains the same for a long time, then standard of living also remains the same. Now, standard of living measured by output per, by output per person, we already discussed, and now no growth in living standards prior to industrial revolution. See, prior to industrial revolution in the, in the mid and late 1700, 1700, there was no uh, big technological improvement, and as a result, what? As a result, growth of output roughly matched growth of population so the standard remained fixed for a long time, as we have discussed in Rome and in, in China. So modern economic growth started with the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain uh, in, in middle and late, uh, in late 1700, right? Create, and this, uh, this Industrial Revolution created a major shift in economic growth. So, uh, so um, output began to rise for some rise much faster than the population growth, right? Leading to ever increasing living standards, right? Uh, so output per uh, output per capita. Countries that so 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 for example, uh, uh, for example in Great Britain, we under modern economic growth, Great Britain is in. in experience, a, 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 this is actually England, right? England experienced an output growth of 2% per, per year. Now this 2% may not sound much, but this 2% adds up very quickly. And, and uh, uh, it implies that the standard of living will double every 35 years. So if uh, we will show you uh, with the rule of 70, that if the growth rate is 2% and if you divide 70 with 2, that will give you the number of years it will take for, uh, for, uh, for uh, per capita income to double, right? So every 35 years, England's, England's standard of living per capita income was doubling. 
growing at a when output is GDP is growing at a at a rate of two GDP per capita is growing at a rate of two percent, right? So also uh, and so if it is if you start with uh, a one thousand GDP per capita, then after thirty five years it will double to 10, twenty thousand GDP per capita, and then and then after and then. Um, after 35 more years, it will be 40,000 GDP per capita. So within a matter of 70 years, per capita will increase from 10,000 to 40,000. See, that is how uh, how uh, that will be the impact of such of this 2% GDP growth rate. So, uh, so, but the thing is that this this miracle in the industrial revolution did not happen in in all countries some countries did not experience so they fall behind fell behind and other countries in western europe and then uh, started in england in late 1700 but then spreads to other uh, west european countries and then to uh, to the us uh, but uh, but that did not happen for all countries around the world so around the world you see countries where that have low standard of living and and their technology uh, is also also poor right now gdp per person shows the standard of living as we said but now we need to make three adjustments to make it to improve this measure we need to make, we will want to make three adjustments first is that all first all denominated in us dollars so when we want to compare GDP per capita of one country with GDP per capita of another country, first adjustment we want to make is all denominated in US dollar. Second is divide each country's GDP by population to get GDP per capita. And then adjust for this PPP. PPP is purchasing power parity. Parity, say PPP. So what does that mean? It means that you see, it is a fact that one US dollar can buy, uh, can, will buy different uh, uh, amount of goods and services in different countries of the world. So if you want to uh, want to use GDP per capita to compare the standard of living of different countries around the world, we need to take care of these uh, differences in purchasing power of dollar across these countries. And this is why purchasing power parity uh, adjustments are made. And if we do so, and we can, we will, so we will see that. Uh, let me see. No, no, okay. So in your in your uh, in your textbook, they give they give an example global perspective 6.1 from page 126 of your textbook. And here they are telling us, let us go back to the our slides. And here they say that GDP per person in selected countries. GDP per person in 2014. In Switzerland, it was $58,171. And in United States, it was $54,360. In Saudi Arabia, it was $52,397. See? In France, it was $40,498. Uh, so on the other hand, there is there are countries like Zimbabwe, GDP per capita was $2,067 only. And North Korea, GDP per capita $1,800 only. Burundi is $865 only, see? Or see, there, so there is wide disparity between what? Between standard of living. Uh, now, now one thing we want to discuss here is the savings and investments. So savings is when consumption is less than current investment. Whenever output, current output, uh, sorry, not, not investment output, whenever current output exceed consumption, there is a balance. That balance is saved, right? So the, the amount a country will invest depend on that savings. Whatever it has saved, it will be, uh, that amount will be available for investment later on in the country. So the amount of investment is ultimately limited by the amount of savings. It's just like us, you know, 
we earn a certain amount of income every